Katie. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys how I have made money online over the last 10 or 15 years. I think this might end up being a video series because I have a lot to say on this topic. And so in this video, it's going to be explaining again, like what I've done for money over the years working online. And then maybe in future videos, I might explain, you know, how to start a YouTube channel and a couple things like that. Um, but anyway, if you're excited for this video, I really hope that you're subscribed and I hope that you keep watching. I have been asked to make videos like this for years and I've made a couple over the years, but I've generally stayed away from the topic because it is such a broad general idea. Like making money online could mean a million different things. Um, and so I kind of stayed away from it because how it is for me might be completely different for you, but obviously I've decided to talk about it and it really might end up being a series because I can make some more specific videos after this one. But before we get into any of that, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. I have worked with Skillshare so many times. They're an online learning platform and honestly, a really, really good resource to have if you want to start making money online because a lot of their classes are in creative niches. So literally they have like freelance classes, entrepreneur classes, and they also have ones in specific areas like graphic design, editing, all that kind of stuff. And so whether it's for a job that you already have, whether it's because you want to start a business or start making money online or just something that you're interested in, if you're just interested in like a hobby in photography or videography or something like that. I really think Skillshare would have a ton of classes that you would love. One of the classes that I'm interested in watching is by Esteban Gast and it's called The Creative Toolkit, Six Techniques to Spark Original Ideas. I really think continued learning is necessary if we wanna like keep our brains strong and if we wanna keep growing in this life. And so I really think that Skillshare is just like a prime tool to either learn new things or even just like brush up on some things that you're already interested in. And so if you are interested in signing up for Skillshare and checking them out and checking out what classes they have. The first 1,000 viewers who sign up using my code Katie Carney or the link in my description will get one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity. So again, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Um, but now I want to tell you guys a little bit of my story. Again, you guys know that I can talk. <laughs> But just want to tell you my story, how I got involved in working online, how I got to where I am today doing YouTube and stuff. Please let me know in the comments. Let me know now in the comments if you want me to make a specific video about how to start a YouTube channel, a specific video on how I edit, a specific video on like what I've learned about branding or about advertising or working with brands or making my website or anything like that. Please let me know in the comments if you want me to do any like specific videos um, about you know, any of the stuff that I just mentioned. Okay, so now let's get into, you know, I guess just how I started working online. So I'm 35, by the way. So YouTube was not a thing when I was young. YouTube came out in 2006, I believe. So I was already halfway through college. I did not watch YouTube growing up because it did not exist yet. I, in high school, had MySpace, okay? That's my generation. We had MySpace. I had Facebook in college, but that was pretty new. And then YouTube in college, Instagram. I don't even know when that came out, but I didn't really use it until a few years ago. So when I was growing up, being a YouTuber was not my goal because it didn't even exist yet. So I kind of thought that I might be a zoologist or a teacher or a writer. Like I wasn't really one of those people who had like a narrow path. Like I knew what I was going to do. I was not one of those people. And so growing up, I just was interested in a couple things, but I didn't really exactly know what I wanted to do when I grew up. Right. And honestly, you can always change your career path. So even if I'm doing this now in 10 years, who knows, maybe I will work at a zoo. I don't know, but I just didn't really have like a clear goal. So after high school, I went to college. I know I play with my hair a lot. It just, it's what it is, okay? But uh, yeah, so then I went to college and at first I was studying to be a pharmacist, if you can believe that. Um, I wanted to be a pharmacist. And then when I got to like calc, I was like, no, <laughs> like I hated, I loved math. I was always in accelerated math growing up. Math was my favorite subject. Math and music were my favorite subjects. But once I got to calculus in college, I was like, no, don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. Cause I think to be a pharmacist, you have to go to like calc three. I'm like, no, 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 no. So I ended up switching my major and then I transferred school. So then I had to switch my major again, obviously to like narrow it down at that school. So I ended up graduating with a degree in social science, which is like a mixture of sociology, psychology, and political science. My concentration was political science. And then I minored in special education. And then I also took a lot of classes in philosophy. So even in college, I was kind of all over the place, but I really 
loved the sociology and psychology and political science. I loved all that kind of stuff. I love thinking why other people think and thinking why groups of people do what they do and thinking why people make the decisions they make and stuff. I love thinking about that kind of stuff. After college, I was kind of thinking maybe I'd go get my master's in sociology and be a researcher. Like that's kind of what I was thinking, to be like a sociological researcher. Or maybe I was thinking that like towards the end of college. That's what I was kind of thinking. Then my senior year of college, my mom, who was a teacher, she retired last year, but she was a teacher for 27 years I think and she worked at a middle school and a college and she did a lot of stuff and my mom is one of those people who always loves learning I that might be where I get it from both my parents love learning so much they are not really like stagnant people you know and so both my parents are like that so my mom even though she was a full-time teacher and a part-time professor she also got into about when was this this was 2000 maybe seven or so she got into affiliate marketing which is essentially where you take someone else's product and you promote it for them and then you get a commission if you sell it right for example like in my description right now i have links to my Amazon affiliate program essentially. So if you buy anything that's linked in my Amazon, if you buy it through my link, I will get a small commission from Amazon for recommending it to you. So that's essentially affiliate marketing. My mom got into it like 15 years ago and she went to a couple marketing seminars to you know, learn from the speakers, but also to connect with other people and to network. Like really those marketing seminars are a lot about networking with other marketers and seeing how you can help each other and work together. And whenever she would talk about affiliate marketing, I hated it. I was like, oh, this is boring. I don't want to hear about it I don't want to talk about it it was so boring but my senior year of college she asked me to go to one of the seminars with her and it was in Vegas and so I went my mom and I went to Vegas I was like 21 years old we went to Vegas to go to the seminar and I just kind of went to tag along with her to go on like a little vacation basically to Vegas tag along with her I was not interested in affiliate marketing I was not interested in internet marketing making money online that's just not what I was interested in when I was 21 years old so at yeah so that was like 14 years ago but I went to the seminar and when you go to those seminars and you're networking people ask you you know what do you do and so I'm like oh well, I'm, I'm in college but I like to write because that's what I really like to do I really like to write I still like to write I have a blog that I just started but I really like to write I like to edit I like to proofread stuff like that and I have liked to do that since like high school so that's kind of one of the things that I was talking about when people asked and after that you know little weekend of being in Vegas one of the people that we were chatting with offered me a job and I remember um, he was this guy from Canada and he's like, he's like, hey, do you want a job transcribing? And I'm like, I don't know what that means. Like I had no clue even what transcribing was, um, but he had these, I forget if they were audio or video, but he had these interviews that he wanted me to listen to and watch or whatever and type them out. So you can have a transcript, right? And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. I'm a really quick typer. I'm good at editing. I'm all, you know, I'm good at all that. So I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. So that was just a couple months before I graduated college. And so literally while I was graduating college, I already had a job online and I started blog writing for some people, editing. Um, I think I did some virtual assistant work all because I was networking and I was meeting people. And so I did a lot of that throughout like my early 20s. And the first year or so was pretty good and consistent. And then after the first year, it slowed down a little bit. And so I did end up getting an office job. I got a job working at a petroleum testing equipment manufacturer. Yep, you heard me right. I might make a whole separate video telling you guys all the jobs that I've had because some of them are very random so maybe that'll be like a fun little video i do at some other point but this one i'm trying to go as fast as i can it's a long story though but i'm just trying to go through this quickly so i worked at this petroleum testing equipment manufacturer and i was the receptionist and uh it was fine i answered phones whatever it was fine but i also still was doing some side work transcribing you know again with how both my parents work and their work ethic i have most of the time had at least two jobs or three jobs even if one was full-time one was a little side job or something i really like having multiple streams of income I always have and I think I learned that from both my parents because my dad also worked a corporate job then did music on the side like basically every weekend and now he just does music but both my parents worked multiple jobs because they loved just doing a lot of things you know and and not having all your eggs in one basket too of just one job but anyway so I worked at this petroleum testing equipment manufacturer on Long Island because I grew up on Long Island and I um, still lived there throughout my early 20s and um, I was still doing some transcribing on the side for this guy who was pretty big in this industry. And after six months or so, 
he called me into his office because the transcribing thing I was just doing online, but he had an office on Long Island actually, which was very random because these people are all over like the world, but it just so happened that this person who I ended up doing some work for was on Long Island. So he ended up calling me into his office one day to chat and he offered me a full-time job working for his internet marketing company. So I was like, yes, please. So I quit the other job and I started working more for him and I like, did a lot of writing and proofreading. I literally ghost wrote his book for him. He never ended up publishing it, but I did do that for months. Like I wrote a book. Um, and then I also did some proofreading and stuff for his magazine. So like I had like my name in print in a magazine, which was really cool. And so again, just throughout all that, like I just kept kind of meeting people, networking and doing a lot of the writing, editing, proofreading, because that's what I knew I was good at. And I knew that I liked, and then a lot of transcribing and stuff too, you know? So then I worked for that guy for a while. I ended up also starting my own little transcribing business. Like it was just me, but I had my website. I would advertise myself on like Craigslist and Fiverr and stuff. Again, this was probably 10 years ago when I did that, but I made a little WordPress website. Now the website I have is through Squarespace, which is really, really great too. But so I just kept kept meeting people, kept networking, kept staying in contact with the people that I already did work for and sometimes would get random work here and there. And then a couple years after that, again, I'm giving you the shortest version possible. A couple years after that, where you know I would still do online work. Sometimes I'd still would get in office jobs too, depending on the time or depending on how much freelance I was getting at the time, whatever. So again, most of the time I had at least some freelance, maybe a full-time job, maybe just a lot of freelance, like it depend on the time. But then in my late 20s, I was like, I wanna make a video and put it on YouTube. I think the first video I put on YouTube, I was 27, 26. I think I was maybe 26. Cause I think it was March of 2013 and I posted like five videos. And here's the thing, whenever people ask me, how, how'd you get into YouTube? I'm like, I don't really know. <laughs> like I just did a lot of work online, a lot of working for other entrepreneurs and learning a lot in the entrepreneurial internet marketing, money-making space. I just learned a lot. And so to me doing YouTube was maybe just like a next step of that. Not a next step like upward, but just like a side step of that. Another way to make money online. Let me try video. Let me try to do video. I'm outgoing and I talk a lot. Let me just try video and see how it goes. So I ended up making like five or six videos. Most of them are private now. I think maybe one or two are still public, but I made like five or six videos back then. And then I just kind of forgot about it. Two years later in 2015, I was like, oh, I forgot that I put some videos on YouTube. I want to go check them. I want to see. And I checked them and one had like 40,000 views. And I was like, why do these videos have any, let alone one having 40,000 views. And it was the first video that I ever talked about sleeping in a car because during all that time, I also started traveling, right? And that was a pretty easy thing to do since a lot of my work was online. And then sometimes if I would stay in one place for a longer time or get an apartment, sometimes I would still get an office job, but I did keep a lot of my online work because I was traveling a lot, you know, so that the lifestyle kind of matched up, but I definitely worked online first. And then I traveled and lived in my car and did all that. That was like the next step. And then I started YouTube. So I started YouTube a couple years after I lived in my car and several years after I started working online, if that makes sense. So again, I made the, those few videos, checked two years later, one had like 40,000 views. I was like, what the heck? So I was like, I wanna go like all in on this. And so I did, I started making two videos a week in March-ish, April of 2015. So it has been seven years that I've been doing this full time. And it took me about three and a half years to really make any money from it. Those first three, three and a half years that I was making two videos a week, like I was really like, pushing, but it still just took me a while. Some people it takes a long time. Some people it takes a short time and some people they never really make money from it, you know, but you'll never know unless you keep going. So those first three, three and a half years, I can look to see how much money I made in that time, but I'm going to guess it was like a few hundred dollars combined in those first few years, but I stayed consistent. I did not give up and my channel did eventually start growing. I think it took maybe a year or two for me to hit like 4,000 subscribers and I was so excited. And then maybe by like the third year or the second or third year, I was at 17,000 subscribers. So I was still trying to grow, still trying to grow, you know? And then all of a sudden, the summer of what, like three years ago or four years ago, maybe at this point, 
that summer, my channel just started growing and I didn't really do anything different. I really wasn't doing much different, but I stayed consistent and it started growing. And I went from like 17 to 100,000 in like six weeks or a month or something. And so it just kept going, kept going. And now here's where I'm at now. Hey guys, it's a couple hours later. Um, all the rest of that footage that I filmed hours ago, finishing out this video, half of it got deleted somehow not even deleted it got like distorted and i think like my camera got too hot and it just was like nah i'm not saving any of that footage and then the rest of it just came out really weird like my camera was like zooming by itself i don't know what was going on but i just wanted to come back really quickly and just finish out that story and then do my outro um i think basically i was just at the part where i was saying this is where i'm at now doing youtube and at least the way that i do youtube it consists of you know coming up with ideas recording videos editing videos, uploading videos, obviously, and then posting on Instagram. And I do reels and posts and stories. And I talk about my YouTube channel and I have those connected. I have my blog. I do some partnerships with some brands and I do some affiliate work. And I also have a couple projects in the mix as well. Um, so there definitely is a lot on the back end of being a YouTuber, but I love my job. It's really exciting. I love that there's so many different aspects of it, but yeah, this is just kind of where I'm at now after years of, you know, networking at those marketing events and then also still sometimes having jobs in an office or working for other people. But then I've just really done a lot of transcribing, writing, editing, proofreading, uh, virtual assistant, customer service. I did that for a few years online as well. And almost all of it was through networking. Even the customer service job that I had for a few years, um, a lot of you guys ask me how I got that job. I literally got it through a friend that I made while I was doing all the marketing stuff and working for other entrepreneurs. And so a lot of my experience with a lot of the online work that I've done has been through networking. I worked with one person, they liked me, they would recommend me, or I would just go to a place that had a bunch of people and potentially they would hire me to do something. But my YouTube channel just, you know, I made a couple videos one day and then a couple years later, I really decided to do it full time and I just did it. I did not have anyone helping me. I didn't really know how to do it at first. I just started doing Doing it and kind of learned as I was going and it did take a few years for it to take off but that's what I did and that's how I did it hopefully now there's so many resources now when you want to start a YouTube channel or be an influencer or be a content creator or work online in any way there's so many resources and so hopefully now if that's something that you want to do I want to make some videos helping you guys but also there's gonna be tons of other ways that you can learn how to do it as well and so I think my next video in this little series is going to be like like a beginner how to guide, like how to even decide what to do, how to even decide what to talk about or what area to be in. I think I'm gonna start with that. And then after that, maybe get into more specifics with blogging, with working with brands, with starting YouTube channel and stuff like that. So please, again, let me know in the comments what you're most curious about when it comes to working online, because I would love to answer a lot of your questions and make some videos that would help you. Um, but yeah, that's just my little journey of how I started working online, doing a lot of work for other people, working for entrepreneurs, but then also how I started my own thing doing YouTube and then having my blog and stuff like that. This is still not the whole story. I know that it ended up being like a 20, 25 minute video, but I really tried to cut it down as much as possible. I could probably make this story into like a two hour story because so many other things happened, you know, but I just kind of wanted to have like an overview of everything, but as short as possible. But I know that I, uh, I know I was still chatting and <laughs> I know this video is still kind of long but there was a lot going on throughout the last 15 years and it's definitely not too late to get in the game it's definitely not and there's definitely a lot of really cool things that you could do if you want to work online so again I'm I think I'm gonna keep this series going and see if I can help you guys but if you have any specific questions let me know in the comments but for now I think that's it that's kind of where I'm at now now I do YouTube and I do my blog and I do Instagram and stuff and I love it and that's where I'm at now and I'm really hoping to even continue to grow and continue to grow with what I'm doing not only grow with um, my followers and grow in stuff like that, but also just grow in what I'm learning, grow in what I'm doing um, and grow outward and do more things. Again, I have a couple things going on in the back end that some of them you'll find out really soon. And yeah, just add a lot more aspects to my business, my business of YouTube. You know, a lot of people even ask me, what do you do for work? And this is what I do and I love it. And so, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed and I really hope that you're subscribed for more videos like this, as well as travel videos, lifestyle videos, hanging out with me videos, health videos, 
videos, stuff like that. So I really hope that you are subscribed and following me on Instagram. But yeah, I guess that's gonna be it. Thanks again for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day. I love you, Jesus loves you, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.